Dear friends, so today we have our last lecture on dispute resolution. And today we are going to cover disclosure, inspection, legal professional privilege, a different sort of evidence and issues related to that admissibility, weight of evidence and things like that. I'm not going to list all the evidence available. Uh, then a settlement, including um, section 36 OFA, um, enforcement of the decisions and alternative dispute resolution, which I actually kept until the last lecture in order Arun Gunasekaran to be able to join us as an expert in arbitration and, and litigation, both areas of practice. Hello, Arun. Hi, Olga. Thanks for inviting me. Nice to have you back. So Arun, Arun is working just to remind everyone uh, in uh, as a litigator and um, in arbitration and litigation, both of them uh, as a senior litigator in the London-based international law firm. Um, Arun, uh, for those who actually at the very early stage of their career, um, if you compare both uh, specialities in the field of litigation, like arbitration, for example, and litigation. There's also mediation and other things that yeah. we can discuss as well later on. But uh, in your opinion, what's the difference from the point of view of Korea? What do you find more fascinating? Any sort of advice or tips? Yeah. So the basic difference is because of um, the litigation, there is issues with enforcing a judgment, which you get through a litigation, whereas the award you get get through an arbitration is easier to enforce, especially in terms of international disputes, you know, when there is parties from different jurisdictions are involved. Um, so that is the main important difference between these two. That's why most of the uh, people who are entering into an international contract where the parties are from two different jurisdictions, they always opt for an alternative dispute resolution as international arbitration rather than choosing a courts um, of law. So, the uh, another difference is like litigating before an English courts is like a, a very stressful uh, process uh, because the they are very very um, um, the rules are followed very strictly. It's very hard to get uh, extension of time because the courts have the um, their own set of rules to finish the disputes within a certain time. So they don't allow you to agend the matters as you wish. Whereas in international arbitration, because you appoint the arbitrators. And it's more flexible in terms of timing, how you want to run the case and stuff. Um, so it's more laid back in an international arbitration in terms of the procedure, whereas in the courts, it's more stringent and it's more stressful. That's the main difference. I'm saying. If, if I summarize, those who want to work with international cases, international clients, and maybe it presupposed to you know, traveling as well, um, as a part of, of the process, because the seat of arbitration may be in different locations, even though it may be governed by London Court of International Arbitration, right? So, um, for example, so, uh, and those who want to be a little bit more flexible as to deadlines may opt for arbitration, though, uh, as against litigation. Great. If we 